the kid from Wisconsin. Yeah, so you were having a busy time. You were coaching some of the players. You were down on the floor signing autographs for fans. No rest for you. No, that's okay, though. These guys keep me young, and there's no place I'd rather be. So that's pretty much the closest lag we've seen all week. Marcel Eckhart had to get down and have a very close look before determining Shane Van Boning on the right to get us underway. Yeah, and a dry break, something you don't see from SVB very often. And I'm not so sure the last time these two clashed, but I know the last time it was what you'd call big moment, like we're in right here. It was the Whirlpool Masters, Alex Xander Kazakis with a goose egg against SVB, a win at 9-0. to zero. Yeah, they did meet in the World Semi-Final earlier in the year. Yeah, that's well. correct. SVB going on to win the title. Plenty of history between them, as we'll discuss, no doubt, in the course of the match. And going up offensive cross side here. Watch out for ball. He's okay. That's a nice opener. Yeah, very confident start. A good chance. You've got to get off to a good start against Shane Van Boning whether you're a newcomer or an experienced figure like this man from Greece. Yeah, and I've got to watch so many of the matches with these two paired off um, that it seems like for Alex, and maybe not against everyone, but against SVB, it seems like when he's had an early mistake or two, it really affected him the rest of the match. I know some of them have been short races in the Moscone, but the... You know, the 2018 finale there, he had some shots. He would certainly like to get back. Had a chance, I think, early in that match before SVB wasn't to be denied. Yeah, I mean, both of his Moscone Cups, he's lost crucial final night singles matches against Van Boning. He's been on the losing team both times. And he decided to play for that little more of an angle, and that's mainly to get the proper angle on the five to swing around to play the six in the same corner. So not so much about getting on the five ball here, but getting proper on the five to get to the six. I don't think Alex was too tested getting to this situation. We'll look at his match scores. Michael's got all of that. Of course, we saw SBB in a big test in his opening match against Joey Tate. But other than that, he kind of cruised on his next two. Well, Kazakis was sent to the loser's side. He beat Ricardo Carcamo of the U.S. comfortably enough, 6-2. But then Jesus Atencio of Venezuela beat him. He had a couple of comfortable wins on the loser's side where he needed to find three wins. 8-1 against John Moody, 8-2 against Jimin Lee. But then he had to play Mickey Krause of Denmark in losers qualifying and only got through 9-7. Yeah, that's correct. Actually, I was sweating that match a little bit. We were keeping track of the scores, talking about Mickey and had actually Mickey had the lead in that match now that I recall quite a bit of the duration of it. But nice opening now. Looks like he's going to try and kill the ball a little bit. A little low tip position. Maybe not catching the second rail. Maybe he does. But he's going to maybe have an awkward stretch here. We'll see. He is a righty, but should be okay. like he's going to go to the longer extension for this shot on the eight. Interested to see if he just stu kind of stun draws across. I don't think he'll go with top inside here, top left. I think he just will stay on the side of the table he's standing on now just to try and get that cut, little cut shot on the nine. Just as well for him, there's no shot clock in operation yet. Yeah, he is going with top inside, so may end up on the rail. All right, got nice energy into the cue ball. 
and a really nice opening rack for Kazakis off of a dry break, which you're not going to have much of from SBB. Well, that's it. He's not going to give you much of anything, is he? But he gave Kazakis the opportunity right at the start. Kazakis opened up with a very nice bank shot. Did the rest from there, 1-0. Now Mario He is through, having just closed it out at 9-4 against Chris Reinhold. And Mario He will now play Mustafa Alnar in the next round after Alnar from Turkey beat Moritz Neuhausen by nine racks to six. And Reinhold was still in with a chance going into that match, of claiming one of those automatic spots on the US Moscone Cup team, but that is now gone. So I make it, in addition to Shane Van Boney, who's already in, four players battling for two spots now. Oscar Dominguez and Skylar Woodward currently occupying the two spots which will be decided this week. But Greg Hogue and Tyler Steyer still with a chance to catch them. Yeah, and Greg Hogue up six to three at the, right now on Omar Al Shaheen. Yeah, Eklund Kachi leading Johan Chua, 6-4. Radislav Babika ahead of Oscar Dominguez at 5-4. And Mark Beisterbosch, 6-3 up on Loho Sum. We'll get some other scores after the next rack, but back to the action here. And I'll tell you, I've seen a lot more dry breaks today. Not saying there hasn't been plenty in the tournament, and that's a big part of the change, but I think I've seen more today collectively of course walking around watching all the matches than I recall seeing in the other days tensions high can affect all the shots Shane Van Boning just in case you don't know is chasing history here again this week five time US Open winner Shares the record with Earl Strickland. And looking for one more to become the first six-time champion in the event's history. Yeah, and we talk about so many greats in today's game and younger guys, fillers, fetter, and all that. Jason Shaw, of course, a little older than those guys, but it'll be a while before another name is really put into that mix with Earl and SVB five titles if it ever happens to be honest with you do you feel now when we come to an event like this there are a lot more players who arrive as potential winners than there were back in strickland's time um yeah i'd, I'd have to say so there's just that many great players and you know all these guys you know there's a I don't know what the number you would put on it, but once they get going, right, once they put that confidence in there, there's there's a lot more guys that can win this event than you think. And not just that, aside from the guys who can win it, there are probably a lot more players who can knock out one of the big names. Even if they don't have it in them to go the full distance, they can still have a big impact on who does win it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, most of those players I was talking about a half a level below the top guys, a level, whatever you want to call it, they, uh, you know, they make breakthroughs in big events. It's usually not in the U.S. Open type of event, but who's to say, you know, that won't be the case this week. There's a lot of young Euros that are, that are fighting for a big victory. Okay, we'll see if he goes at this. It is a shootable shot. I mean, he is elevated, but he has a pretty nice safety coming off the left side of the one going up behind the three. thing is, he's really got to commit to position. Needs a little bump on the two, and he's going to get it. You'd say that's lucky, but really he played it percentage-wise to never really get in trouble. Okay, if I get position, that's great, but I'm not going to get snookered the way I played this tough one ball, and that's smart player. Go 
Showing a little southpaw here. Doesn't have to do much. Just get a, you know, a foot past the nine or so. Uh, he came down quite a bit more, so that's going to improve things. There's a joke in the world of journalism. Could you interview Neil Armstrong without mentioning the moon landings? And obviously you couldn't. And equally so, we were saying before this match, can you commentate on this without saying the words 9-0? Well, obviously, equally so, you can't because of that World Masters final you alluded to last year. It meant so much to Kazakis to get that win. We've seen off Justin Sajic, Skylar Woodward, Eklund Kachi and Hill Hill finish in the semis. And to beat Shane Van Bowling 9-0. Who on earth would have seen that coming? And the previous staging of the World Masters had ended in such disappointment for Kazakis. Famously, 5-0 up against David Alcady. Ended up losing 9-8 with Alcady making that now legendary full table bank shot on the winning nine ball. Yeah, and the thing about that 9-0 is, of course, his opponent, SVB, trying to win the match and not giving up anything. But as you mount those games on your side, you kind of recognize that goose egg you're putting up on your opponent. And pressure mounts on that regard as well. Not easy to, to whitewash somebody. OK, a little choice here. You can come two rails. I personally like kind of coming straight down the table myself. Don't really see the added bonus or anything better about coming with two rails for the seven in the lower left. I kind of like coming down straight for the seven in the lower right. Again, a little preference. The thing about it, if you come two rails with inside, you could land on the rail straight on the, on the seven. Coming one rail down the table, that's a little more difficult to do. Oh, that's a little thick that may need to travel and it's just going to clear enough Beat Shane Van Boning from in front. So much harder to try and come from behind against him. And you can't let him disappear out of sight, which he will give him half a chance. So as we've said, the start so important against him. And just as I was starting to write the last rights for this rack, he's left himself a bit more work than he would have liked here. You know, a lot of players would have just came a soft two rails up the left side of the table there rather than crossing the position line or possibly crossing the position line. So a huge little bit of a tester here in rank two for Kazakis. Looks like he's drawing the ball. No, he's following. Yeah, as I said, left himself a harder nine than he would have hoped, but still would have been a surprise if he'd missed that. So Alex Kazakis, long way to go. Can't do any better than this for now. That's 2-0. Now Eklund Kachi, well his Moscone Cup place is under real pressure this year. But he's doing all he can at the moment. 7-4 up now against Johan Chua. And that will be a really good win from Chua. has been playing very well here this week. Radoslav Babika now 5-4 in front of Oscar Dominguez, who's leading the race at the moment for the remaining automatic spots on the American team. Ralph Suke, who's been on more European teams than anyone in history, is 3-2 down against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Wu Kun Lin has a 4-1 lead over Roberto Gomez. Victor Zielinski, 3-2 ahead of John Mora. Greg Hogue, still with Moscone Dreams, 7-4 lead over Omar Al Shaheen. Mark Beisterbosch, 6-4 in front of Loho Sum, who's had such a memorable year. And Thomas Kaplan with a 4-1 lead over Marcel Price. Yeah, I was watching the Oscar Dominguez match. He just started off a little slow, a couple little mistakes, but now has caught Babika at five apiece, so maybe Oscar turning the corner in that match. Well, it looks a little dry at the moment as the six going to get a kiss, so we're going to get our first offensive look with one heck of a mess on that left side rail. The good thing for Shane 
as the three's near, so maybe if he needs to get some short side position on the four later, he may be able to produce a chance at that, but nothing easy even here on the one. A little difficult queuing over the two. Definitely going to have to earn this rack one way or another, whether that be an incredible run out from the layout I see or tactically some type of safety later on in the rack. I'd keep it simple here again with so much congestion. I don't try to do too, too much here. He's trying to just pinch it back, it looks like. Okay, now we're going to have to make a decision. Is he going to come back for the bank on the four? Probably so. That'll carry him into the seven to try and take care of a couple problems. That's what he's sizing up now. he wants to bank at it from there. The cue ball's going to have a ton of speed. I think he probably plays the safety here. Just chipping the four underneath the 5-7. Coasting the cue ball over to the rail. So, of course, just one kick shot here to the top cushion. Probably at a very light speed. He's got a lot of ways he can hit this and come clean. He can catch the second rail right before the four. Kind of cut the four back into the seven, let the cue ball just bleed over the top of the seven. Just a light kick, period. That's, that's definitely what you'll see from Alex. Just a matter of if, you know how fortunate things come away. The good thing is with the light kick, is he going to get any hit? That's the hit I was talking about. And that's why the guys want to stay aggressive, Michael, is because they know how great that player behind him is. Once Van Boning got to single elimination at the World Championship earlier in the year, it was one close run thing after another. He had to win five matches from there to get to the final. And they were all 11-8, 11-9, or in the case of his match against Mika Imanen, 11-10, until he got to the clash with Alexander Kazakis. It was actually his easiest match through that single elimination stage on the route to the final but it was still 11-7 because Akis showed great determination all the way through yeah this is difficult though the nines got him cut off the natural path to kick at the four he can kick a little right of the nine to the top rail with a hair left spin should hit the ball going that round he's trying to see is there something better You know, the one thing that Shane has on his side here is the eight ball. So, he can kick at a light speed. Even if the four opens up a little bit, the eight should block the pocket. Maybe kind of forcing Alex to shoot a combination if, if you know, he wants to go offensive. Don't really see the big plus going this route. 
Now, if he can get in behind the four enough, get it to the top rail, maybe the seven slows the cue ball down. You can get a snooker that way, but you could certainly foul. Look, he's taking an intentional. Wow. This could not get much better for Shane here. Yeah, I don't. He's going to be on a foul. Now, Kazakis is sizing some things up, and I'm not sure what route he's going to go. Is he just going to roll the five on top of these balls? Now we're going to have a, a jammed-up situation where neither player can get at the four, but they're on a foul situation. Now, Shane's trying to think he can get at the four, but he can't. And that's why I didn't understand why he didn't kick at the ball to begin with. He's going to have to open some balls up. And the reason you refer to the foul situation is the three strikes and out. That's right. So he's going to move these two. That's going to help him. He is on two fouls, though. So if you're Kazakis, which way do you want to get the snooker? Most players would try to cut the four a little bit and bring the cue ball two rails underneath the eight. Doesn't want to open the four, Nate. Doesn't want to leave a gap for like a jump shot of, of some sort. Wants, and Shane, if he gets this ball all the way over to the rail, Shane's going to have a difficult kick that requires a ton of spin. He's very surprised he pushed the eight on top of that four there, that being Shane. That's going to leave him a natural shot at the four. And he's on two fouls. Of course, he's been warned. But here, you're almost better off to move the four out in a little space going to the end row. I wouldn't try to get the snooker here, I don't think. Now, he may cross the four with a little draw, trying to go to the top rail and back behind the purple five. But I don't know. I think I may just come across this a little thick, get it out in, the, in some space, and make Kazakas come with a shot from the end rail. I think if you go for the snooker, you got a better chance to leave him an easy shot. Now, of course, Shane won't threaten any pocket with the cue ball. No reason to do that. Now, the one thing Shane doesn't, he doesn't want to leave him the tester. Is he going to slow draw behind the six? This is dangerous. Now, you look around, so many veterans that are, have never won this title that are still in it. So many stories. Neil's fan, I see him over there practicing, has pretty much everything on his resume except for the U.S. Open. All right, he's trying to pinch draw this a little bit, maybe up by the six, so be careful for the scratch in the upper right. Yeah, that would have, oh, wow. You think this guy ain't got some nerve, Michael? Look at this shot. Oh, wow. Good effort. Yeah. There's the round of applause anyway. Certainly seeing the other side of the game here. It's two great competitors. Kazakis just leaves every last drop of energy out there on the table every time. And, well, we know all about Van Bonin and his will to win. And I think, you know, that goes without saying for most of these champions, but one thing that... Alex was so impressed to me. I, you know, I met him when he was really trying to come up the ranks, and I would have put him at maybe top 100 in the world at that time, maybe 150-ish. You know, there it was right here at the U.S. Open when it was in Virginia that I met him, and that maximum effort that he always gives is what's gotten him here in the position he's in in the world ranks and stays highly ranked, hard worker. Sorry, Jeremy, I was just going to say, I think he's always been aware of the fact that there wasn't a huge expectation on him, and he felt he was a better player than people reckoned he was, and he's used that to fuel his career. The sort of guy who loves to prove people wrong. 
Yeah, and he's super nice guy on top of that. Great for the sport. But I used to watch him. Even he get knocked out of the event pretty early-ish. And he'd be at the pool room practicing like he was in the finals, you know. It's just, and not just, you know, hitting balls, really committed. Big shot here to keep SVB in his chair. say it'll be a decisive turning point in the match but it could be an interesting one that goes in he's got a chance for 3-0 well one thing is you don't expect Shane to keep dry breaking even though he did have that problem at the European Open a bit it was almost alarming to him how he was missing the one in the side a lot here I haven't really seen the problem for that except for this opening rack of course for Kazakas. He was so close to having the chance. Open a 3-0 lead. Oh, that's got to slow down. This is going to get a little 50-ish. Shouldn't be a problem. Could be a big moment, this. Yeah. Sometimes Shane used a little lower tip position than others on shots like that. And sometimes that'll make the cue ball, object ball kind of drag with the cue ball a bit. And against Kazakis, of course, but that swing looked off kind of from the start. Much more difficult sh shot that Shane had, but didn't really threaten the pocket much at all. Yeah, he was further off target than Van Boning had been. Well, it's very early. This has taken on the feel of being a very significant rack. Both feeling it very early in the match. Yeah, and it's something about, you know, people say you don't want to play first round, but tension builds in this room. Even for the players preparing for their next round, they see some big moments. You know, it's not saying that you're going to wonder what you're going to do in those big moments, but... <laughs> That rack felt much more like something you might see if it was about seven all instead of only the third rack of a race to nine. And I've said Shane Van Boney won't give you much. And Dave Kazakis, more chances than you would have dared to dream of there. Kazakis has eventually taken one, so it is 3 0. Greg Hogue is fast becoming one of the stories of this US Open, and he's on the hill at 8-5 against Omar El Shaheen. If he gets through, he's going to play Mark Beisterbosch because the man from the Netherlands has beaten Loho Sum, who's had such a memorable year, by nine racks to four. Eklund Kachi 7-5 up on Johan Chua. The closest match going on at the moment is between Oscar Dominguez and Radislav Babika. That's 5-all. Ralph Suke. All these years, still battling well against a contemporary star, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Spanish World Cup winner is in front, but only by one at 4-3. Wu Kunlin, 4-2 up on Roberto Gomez. Victor Zielinski is pulling away from John Mora at 5-2, and it's also 5-2 
in favour of Thomas Kaplan against Marcel Price. Back to table one. Big story going on here. Yeah, and I got the update. I think Greg Hogue has won that match. At yeah. Nine, nine games to five. Yeah, just while I was talking there, he won that 14th rack, so he will play Mark Beisterbosch. And he's still in the mix to claim a place in your team, Jeremy. Not the most familiar of American names. Tell us about him. Yeah, I've actually known Greg since he was about 16, I guess, when I met him in Oklahoma City. Uh, excuse me, Tulsa. Um, yeah, he was a really good player like a lot of those guys, those kids from the Midwest at a young age. He used to call him Spanky when he was younger. and uh, Just, you know, took a little break from the game, you'd say, but been back in it now for several years. and. Really talented player like a lot of those kids, like I talked about from the Midwest, but just a tough grinder. He's going to just take what you can, you know, what you give him and try and work with it the best he can. He's been putting together some nice wins, though. Still got a long way to go to make the Moscone team, but it would be quite a story if he did. Yeah, well, I don't think he's that far behind, to be honest with you. Oh, I mean, it's so tight. It's yeah. so tight now, but he's still going to have to get through a bit further because obviously Dominguez and Woodward have got points this week. Could add to those tallies. Yeah, and they were a little ahead of Greg to start with. Now he's going to need a little travel on this two ball. Doesn't want to leave the return kick shot here. I don't think he's left him to cut. It's close. We are going to be talking about the Moscone a lot today because it's on everyone's minds getting into that team. Kazakis is still in the mix to claim an automatic spot on the European team, but he would have to win the tournament. snooker here it looks like from Shane and I'm sure there are many at home doing the math and keeping up with what's going on things will definitely unfold not only today at some time you would figure but definitely over the next two days well, there's one player who's got unfinished business with the Moscone Cup it is Alexander Kazakis after the disappointments he's had in the past both on a personal level and as part of the European team This is about the most difficult one rail kick you'll have on the slick table or really any of the pool tables. When you're close to the rail, a little judging how it's coming off, easy to hit it long. Just like that. Oh, wow, great hit. And very nervy the way he shot it, but that was correct. Well, Shane's just got to gotta kick this one in. the type of shot on the way it lays the six is a little in the way of the natural path so you may see him add some speed here instead of rolling this ball if he rolls it he could go long yeah yeah you gotta know that though not a good sign there you starting to think another nine nil could it happen again? Oh, he doesn't want to let SBB get going no matter what the score is. So, the thing about Shane, of course, everyone in this game, you have to stay mentally strong when things aren't going your way because normally you'll open up with a big opportunity to get back in the match. Of course, we'll see how that, that goes. But. It's just not going to be that, you know, where you hear from players, I never really had a chance, you know, because of the break and everything else. These days, normally you're going to get a chance. It may be four to nothing. It may be five to one. But you have to remain headstrong. All right. 
bearing is just going to stun up for a little two rail angle to go short side on the four. And he's going to play off the three here. Should get up around the head string on the left side rail. Shooting the three in the lower left. Maybe it's just a flick of left English here. For Kazakis, I mean, don't get me wrong, he can come with it, but really once he gets that starter down and gets in position, that's really where he excels, keeping control, maintaining a good cue ball, good decisions. Probably the starter itself is what really only separates him from the next level of players that are just above him. Uh, that looked a little thick, but it's going to slide in. Early in the year, he just kept losing to Van Boning over and over again. We've talked about that world semi final at the same venue only a few weeks before that. They'd both been involved in the Premier League pool in Milton Keynes. And that was a format where players played each other three times in some cases. In fact, in some cases, it was even four. They had three meetings, Van Boning won them all. And of course, he had also beaten Kazakis in the quarterfinals of the World Championship back in 2016. So a sense of deja vu about that world semi-final defeat earlier in the year for Kazakis. Second time he'd been that far in the world championship. In fact, he was just a rack away from the final in 2018 before bowing out to the eventual champion there, Joshua Filler. Okay, a little in between here. Could draw back, could kind of stun forward for the nine in the side. I think, I think he draws above the nine here. I did hold for the side. Shane Van Boning is being asked some very serious questions here, and he isn't coming up with the answers at the moment. Alexander Kazakis is giving everything as ever, and it's all going very nicely for him. He leads the world champion 4-0. Right, let's look at some other scores. Eklund Kachi in a real battle with Johan Chua, who's only one behind now at 7-6. Oscar Dominguez, 6-5 in front in another really close one against Radislav Babika. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has just won the eighth rack to lead Ralph Suke 5-3. Wu Kun Lin is 5-2 up on Roberto Gomez. Viktor Zielinski of Poland enhancing his reputation all the time. You could say the same about his opponent, John Mora, but it's Zielinski who's leading 5-3 at the moment. And it's also 5-3 in favor of another Polish player, Thomas Kaplan, against the Welshman Marcel Price. We are now getting into the action in the last 32. Wojciech Szewczyk, who knocked out Alban Ocean earlier, is getting started against Roland Garcia, also Yanni Uski and Abdullah Al Yusuf, and Mustafa Alnar versus Mario He. They're all in the first rack at the moment. 4 0 to Kazakis. Oh, this is the thing. You know, you don't expect a dry break to continue from Kazakis. We did have one of those. Do expect shots to come clean. That's why. Any mistakes early can really, you know, they can really start to add up and look like, you know, costing you much more than just one game. Now, Shane, on this table, well, I believe it was on this table anyways, he was down heavily in his first match against Joey Tate. So he's been here already this week. Just a matter, though, is Kazakis going to surrender to the table for Shane to get going? It's all this in the match we did earlier, Jeremy, between Jason Shaw and Lee Van Corteza. Shaw never really settled early on. Corteza got a bit of a lead. 
Shaw was obviously hoping he could turn it round, but never really got a chance to because Cortezo just kept shutting him out. And it's exactly what Kazakis will have in mind. I think when we talk about the two biggest individual titles in the game, it's this and the World Championship without question. Now, you want to be in the category of players who has won one of those. Alex Kazakis is not in that category at the moment. But of all the players who've never won either of those, it would be hard to think of anyone at the moment who'd be better placed to make that breakthrough. Yeah, well, he's a he's a hard worker. He's been near, you know, those titles before. So, you know, once he gets comfortable, his demeanor, I think, really adds up, you know, to making that big win. But, you know, there's a bunch of guys in this room that don't have either one of those titles also that have played some incredible pool this week. It's just a matter of taking advantage of the opportunities you get. Of course, the break and all that matters, so you, you have to be doing the right things. But I think for sure Kazakis is a guy that can get going and, and just kind of what I tell the guys is, you know, just kind of play the game by yourself and see what happens. When it comes to these big field matchroom events with at the new European and UK Opens this year and the World Championship. Now this as well, the previous three have all been won by players who had won events of that stature before. And this is the last chance in 2022 for someone to join that club, someone who's won a big field event at this level of prestige and profile. He's a little concerned here. You know, your first look sometimes can concern you. You'd rather have gone forward by the left side of the nine. Now he's either got to draw to the side rail or kind of stun two rails to the right or right side of the nine. I like the draw more to the side of rail. He's going to stun a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. He's pretty much in control. Yep, two balls down on the break. For the first time in the match, we have someone running out from the break. Alex Kazakis, as we've said, has beaten Shane Bamboni 9-0 in a big match before. Only about a year and a half ago. He's more than halfway to doing it again. It's 5-0. Complete contrast to events over on table two between Eklund Kachi and Johan Chua. That one is 7-all at the moment. Oscar Dominguez, one ahead of Radislav Babika at 6-5. As we look in on table two, Eklund Kachi, runner-up to Jason Shaw five years ago if he loses this match he'll be relying on a captain's pick to keep his Moscone Cup place Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has a 5-3 lead over Ralph Suke Wu Kun Lin is 6-2 up on Roberto Gomez Victor Zielinski has won the ninth rack to go 6-3 in front of John Mora and Thomas Kaplan is leading Marcel Price 6-3 one match in this round hasn't started yet that's Chang Young Lin former finalist against Skylar Woodward and no scores to report yet from the matches which are underway in the last 32. Big score to report here, 5-0. Well, the cue ball got a nice kiss there. It was heading towards the corner, but, you know, the two got a little jammed up. I think it may go by the eight. Nevertheless, it's now or never for SVB. He's got to get something going. Said he was well behind against Joey Tate. Did manage to turn it round in extraordinary circumstances. Assisted to a large extent by Tate. Incredibly potting the wrong ball. Five instead of the four at a key juncture. Yeah, it looks like the two does pass the five. <clears throat> Excuse me. So position here is key and we couldn't have got much better on that. Really opens the rack up now. And SVB, of course, got to keep that concentration. Probably nobody better. And then, of course, get out here and put some racks together. At least make balls on the break to try and get control of the table in some fashion. Well, when you're trying to turn around a big deficit, you've got to hope that your strengths come to the fore. And although, as you alluded to earlier, 
he's not always been firing with the break this year. When it has been all clicking for him from the break in 2022, it's been a huge weapon for him to have. That's what he needs now. He got a little funny here. I think he can pinch, kind of hold it for the five in the upper left. Looks like that to me. Today's equipment really, you know, offers that shot in a little easier manner than, you know, yesteryear's equipment. But now this is a little funny. Has he got to go into the eight with the cue ball or is he going to go by the eight? Got to make a clear cut decision one way or the other. Yeah. look at a lot of players in this event that really do have the skills to win this event you know sometimes it gets between the ears and the headstrong guys are are the ones that you look at because they're all talented but I mean just look at a guy like Beaster Bosch for instance definitely has the skills has the experience maybe not all the finals in the world that he'd like to have been in but you know every player in the building knows how great a player he is just a matter of getting a few shots, doing it at the right time. And then again, you got to do it over and over these last few days. And there's no way he hasn't picked the brains of his World Cup partner, Niels Fyen, who's such a good advisor to have when it comes to knowing how to get the job done in big events and make that step up. And he's still very, very young, right in the heart of his career. He has another great 10 or 15 years left. And just no reason why he can't win it. And I think there's another 10 or 12 like that. Well, it isn't going to be 9-0 this time. The dry break from Alex Kazakis gave Shane Van Boning the chance he was waiting for to start turning it round. He's still got a lot more recovery work to do. It's now 5-1. Oscar Dominguez, every rack counting so much in his match against Radislav Babika. He's just won the 12th to go two clear at 7-5. He needs two more to go through. To the last 32. Seven all between Eklund Kachi and Johan Chua. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has a 6 3 lead over Ralph Suke. Wu Kun Lin 6 2 against Roberto Gomez. Victor Jolinski, the ever improving pole, 6 4 in front of John Mora. Thomas Kaplan has a 6 3 lead over Marcel Price. And Yanni Uski, someone you've been talking about a lot today, Jeremy. He's won the first rack of his match in the last 32 against Abdullah Al Yusuf. Shane Van Boning's just won his first rack in this match. Took him a while, though. Yeah, he won't lay off here either. Going to smash him. Two balls coming around. Is it going to open up and get a pocket, or is the seven in the way? Now, Shane won't back up on this cross corner, most likely, unless he sees a safety he really likes. But it's hard for these guys to play safe when they can cue the ball and the bank's kind of sitting right in front of them like this. And trailing five to one, it kind of all adds up to to knock this ball in. Yeah, we mentioned the match against Joey Tate. Nine seven, he got through. Nine five against Margaret Feffelova. He played really well. Didn't do much wrong. And then. And Bowman played her husband, Tyler Steyer, the next day and beat him 9-2. Today, he's fighting a rear guard action, and that'll help him along the way. Watch him kind of force the two in here. Caught a little bit of uh, the knuckles, you might say. Now, this is a tricky little shot after you make a big shot. I know it's easy, but just don't take your eye off of it going to the rail with the cue ball. should be good here and this is what he needs not only to cut the lead down he needs to put some racks but he's got to remind Alexander Kazakis hey I'm here in this match See how he likes. Is he going to come all the way over to the side rail here to get a nice running angle on the seven to come two rails? Looks a little heavy. 
This has gotten awkward. I think he overhit his mark there, Michael. I think he wanted to lay on the rail to just run the cue ball two rails off the seven. Now he's got to draw this, and I think he's got to kind of cheat the pocket a little on the seven. That way he draws right over where his hand's at now. That should just, that'll do. First break and run. Shane Van Boning continues this emerging recovery. It's now 5-2. Wu Kun Lin closing in on victory over Roberto Gomez, 7-2 now. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, 6-3 up on Ralph Souquet. Victor Zielinski leading John Morris, 6-4. Thomas Kaplan, 6-4 and Marcel Price. The other matches in this round, as you were, Kachi and Chua 7 all. Oscar Dominguez leading Radislav Babika 7 5. And in the next round, the last 32, Mustafa Alnar has won the opener against Mario He. And Roland Garcia has taken the first rack of his match against Wojciech Shevchik. Already told you that Janioski is 1 0 up on Abdullah Al Yusuf. And I'll tell you, Michael, I knew we were missing a player that I expected to see here just because I. I love watching him play, and I usually learn something from the kid. Is Oliver Zolnoki? Mm. He didn't make the U.S. Open. Of course, there's always some travel problems, visas, different things. Who knows? But hard luck not having the youngster here. Yeah, well, he was someone who, going into the week, still had a chance of making the Moscone Cup team automatically, but obviously not to be. Well, Shane is at least for now, remedied that dry break in our opener and now has an, a great chance. I believe the three does pass the four. He's got a proper angle on the two to get to that three and really should uh, cut that deficit down even more. Six years since he won that fifth US Open to equal the record, but because of the event being moved to a different part of the calendar one year and also the year we lost to COVID. He's only actually had three attempts to get that tie-breaking sixth. He's not really been that close. Last 16 last year, beaten by Lucius Yap. Last 16 the year before, going down to Wu Cha Ching, or rather the staging before that in Las Vegas in 2019. Both of those players went on to reach the final. And it was a different format in 2017 when he had his first crack at the sixth title but he had a ninth place finish which amounts to the same thing effectively lost to Joshua Filler so he's not really been that close it's not like he's been on the brink of completing the elusive half dozen yeah well the last two times he took a shot at it he was in great form though it took a exceptional match by both those guys to knock him out and then again like you said both those guys got to the final of those respective years How quickly this has turned around. The dry break from Kazakis in rack six was a big moment. Some boning made it count. And it's back to back break and run since then. 5 3 has a really, really different look to it than 5 0. Looks like the 15th rack has been going on a long time between Eklund Kachi and Johan Chua. Still 7 all there. And Oscar Dominguez, still no advance on 7-5 for him against Radoslav Babika. John Mora is close to 6-5 down against Viktor Zielinski. Marcel Price is hanging on well. The Welshman trails Thomas Kaplan 6-4. And in the next round, the last 32, Wojciech Shevchik knocked out Alban Ocean earlier. But 2-0 down now to Roland Garcia. And no change in the other two matches underway in that round. And talk about a dangerous guy, especially because he trailed early in his mat last match and he had a heck of an opponent. So you know he had to get in form to win it is Chris Melling. Chris Melling is a dangerous player in this event, especially if he gets really solid between the ears, you know, like really confident, right? So. Oh, there's.
there's that dry break. It's amazing how it just happens from nowhere. It seems these guys are getting shots off of these dry breaks. So now Kazakas to try and return the favor. Yeah, just going back to Melly, you never know what form he's going to be in turning up because he does play a lot of eight ball, so you don't know how much nine ball he's had in the lead up to an event in terms of practice and preparation and everything, but the sign's good so far. He plays Badr Alawadi in the next round. Yeah, a player from Kuwait that cannot be overlooked. Super solid fundamentals. Really good stroke. And, and a fighter batter, that's for sure. He's been in a lot of big spots. He must be a little bit snookered here, or maybe just sizing up position on the two. Not the type of shot you would want to roll unless you have to, but that looks like probably the best choice. Unless he's snookered here. Is he having to roll out? It's kind of what he's looking at. win over Shane Van Boning to win the World Masters last year. It was the start of a whitewash relay, really, because when he went back to defend the title this year, albeit at a different venue, he lost his first match 7-0 to Dennis Orcolio, who in turn lost 7-0 to the eventual winner, Joshua Filler. It's not been a great year for him in the matchroom events outside of the World Championship. Didn't make single elimination at the UK Open. Went out early at the European Open, last 32, beaten by John Mora. And with Greece, went out in the second round of the World Cup, although they were just a rack away from overcoming the challenge of the Coe brothers to get to the quarters. Won a couple of events of a smaller but still reasonable size nature in the States, back to back, at the start of the year. One of those was the Wisconsin Open. He beat Fedor Gorst, Eklan Kachi. And Lee Van Corteza for seeing off Badr Alawadi in the title match. So what's the thinking here, JJ? Well, Shane doesn't like to give him back very often, and I like that mentality usually. If you're comfortable, you can cut off the left side of the one, and run the cue ball to the top rail, side rail, come back down. Problem is, if you don't get the snooker, the one may open up. Now he's going to look at, I think, banking the one maybe straight back down and trying to go with a high ball into the six with the cue ball. It's not terrible. To be honest with you, though, Michael, I'm not in love with a whole, whole lot here. Really hard to edge the ball and run the cue ball accurately when it's out in the middle of the table. You know, if that ball's down by the head string a little more, the one, a little, a little easier to be confident running the cue ball. Let's just have a look in on table two. Eklund Kachi won that epic 15th rack against Johan Chua to get to the hill, and it doesn't look to have taken him long to see it out from there. So Chua, who's played so well this week, is out, beaten by Kachi by nine racks to seven. Chua, who got to the quarterfinals here last year. <coughs> Kachi has been runner-up in the past. Yeah, that's the shot that I saw initially. And again, the one was going to come out a little bit open. Very good line on the cue ball there from Shane. So keeping the pressure on the on the Greek champion. Just to wrap up that catchy situation, he will now play Duong Quoc Hoang of Vietnam, who ended the hopes of Shane Wolford earlier today. The end of that match means Chang Young Lin and Skylar Woodward can finally get things underway on table two and the one remaining match yet to start in this round. Yeah, very difficult. Now, if he's not 
totally snookered, he'll try to bank the one back down towards the seven, two rails and come to the right side. Just take his chances here. All about the one ball more than the cue ball. Pretty solid hit. He's going to hope it doesn't get through that gap, and it looks like it may. Still pretty good effort. You're just trying to contain your opponent right there. You know, as long as your opponent doesn't clear the table or end the game on this next inning, you've kind of done your job if you're Kazakis. Now Shane's sizing up a 1-9. I'll tell you, he can run the cue ball safe, but I don't like this shot too much. You know, this shot's okay when everything you hit it perfect, but whenever you don't make the nine, where's the one going? Where's the cue ball going? Okay, he was all out about the safety the entire way. He wasn't playing the nine at all. that next match. Huge Skylar Woodward fan, obviously, but I'm a big Chang fan as well. He's one of the you know guys I, I do like to watch a lot of, and during pandemic, he kind of started to play Chinese eight ball a little more, not being able to travel. Actually kind of changed his stroke a little bit according to the Chinese eight ball. But good to see him back here in the U.S. Open. He's had a couple close runs, of course. Sure. Is he playing like a safety here? Maybe a three ball combo on the nine? Okay. Shane has battled for that first shot and he's gotten it. Let's just to see how he plays this. The one goes in the corner by the six. Kind of drops him on the short side position of the two. here. A little awkward cueing. It's a little off angle on the two, but not a ton of angle. You know, you kind of want one way or the other here. You want to be straight or you want a little more angle to easily move the cue ball. Good thing for Shane is the four is not too bad. So get in position on the three. You don't need a ton. And he'll take that. today about Moscone Cup places. I should say Shane Van Bonin is the only nailed on member of the American team. Clinched his place some time ago. See. Balls potted, all level up. Van Bonin tries to level up in the match by winning this rack and the next. And one thing that will definitely happen in the Moscone this year, or well, almost definitely, is that Shane Van Bonin will become the first player ever to play 100 Moscone Cup matches. He's on 96 at the moment. So I'm guessing probably somewhere on maybe day two that landmark will be reached. Yeah, well, he's grinding hard here. Every ball. 
trying to overcome a big deficit. Of course, everyone in the building, including the two at the table, know that we have a match now, that's for sure. Don't expect a mistake here in rack number nine, and it should be 5-4 soon. Probably definitely doesn't want straight here on the six. A hair of an angle would be perfect, just like that. think he was trying to come across the table at all doesn't really make sense to come across the table it doesn't get you on the eight better it certainly wasn't as natural from the six to the seven doing so so I think a little fortunate to cross cross to the left side and get that clean shot on the seven I think he could have ended up on top of it what's the old principle if you're going to misjudge it make sure you misjudge it by a lot because then you'll have the same shot on the other side of the table. And you don't think he's into this match. He's sweating every shot, and I'm not sure that got there. Yeah, we could see the anxiety. Yeah, I think he's a hair short. I mean, of course, the camera never does us any favors. We're a little ways away from the table, but maybe he can spin it. This shows us if it is on, it's very, very tight. Yeah, well, the thing is, if he has to soft spin it, the cue ball is going to end up on the top rail for a tough shot on the nine. Okay, he could kind of pinch it. So a couple of break and runs back to back. Different story in this one, but it looks as though he's going to win it as well. And that'll be four on the bounce. It's anyone's match now. Kazaka still has the lead, but Van Boning has all the momentum. And now he trails by just a single rack at 5-4. Now, news of three players who have just moved to the hill. Oscar Dominguez, 8-6 up on Radislav Babika. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has an 8-4 lead over Ralph Suke. And Wu Kun Lin on the brink of a big win over Roberto Gomez. It's 8-3 there. Otherwise, some close contests going on in this round. Obviously, the one we're watching on table one. But also John Mora, who now leads Victor Zielinski 7-6. And Thomas Kaplan, who's 7-5 up on the Welshman, Marcel Price. Jumping ahead to the next round, the last 32, Roland Garcia. 3-1 lead over Wojciech Shevchik. It's also 3-1 for Yanni Uski against Abdullah Al Yusuf. Is this going to be the week when Uski is a really deep run in a big event like this? And Mustafa Alnar of Turkey has a 2-0 lead over Mario He. He was a semi-finalist at the recent European Open. This man was the runner-up there. He's got his eyes on the big prize here. And he's only one behind now in this last 64 match. Wow, golden break there. And Shane's had a few this year. But none, none more important than this one to tie the match. Well, his first break in this match was a dry one. This one is a golden break, and that's really going to be hard for Kazakis to take, isn't it? He worked so hard to build that 5-0 lead, and Bonin has come back so strong, and now this is the moment when the deficit was wiped out entirely. Yeah, and just like the layouts, Shane wants them tough for both players. He wants the pressure to be at a premium as well. He feels like that's a big advantage for him, and we've certainly reached that point at 5-5. So we'll see. Of course, Kazakis has got to get an open look first, but we'll see how he responds if he comes up with something very difficult to start. All turned on that dry break in the sixth rack. Since then, Van Boning has been absolutely dominant. Wu Kun Lin is through. 9-3 winner over Roberto Gomez. will probably play Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the next round. 
Yeah, and another solid tournament for Gomez. I think all he needs really is just to play more of these big events around the world. I think it, sometimes he's still a little nerves get the best of him sometimes, just like it does all of us. But, man, what a talent. And now another good shot at the two. Not as easy as some of the other ones, and certainly a difficult position play. He's kind of got to play this in the side and go to the side rail, take a long one on the three with the four a little covered up also. I doubt I'll see a safety here, or we'll see a safety here, Michael, even though this is not easy. Very brutal angle going into the side pocket, especially if you need a little speed on the cue ball. Now he's got some really nice safeties that he could play. But I know he wants to attack. Was he looking at a three-ball combo here on the 2-6-4? I think he was looking at that for just a moment. Now, sometimes Shane will get very involved in, like, a two-way shot that he likes. Like, like maybe shooting the two off the edge of the four, kind of holding the cue ball behind the three, trying to make the two in the side. I think that's he's sizing something like that up, to be honest with you. I don't think he's trying to picture the two just straight in that left side pocket. So it's either the two off the four is what he's looking at or the three ball combo. I think it's the two off the four with a little bit of a backdoor safety in mind. That was the two off the six. Didn't quite get the cue ball over as much as he wanted, and there was no safety in mind there, Michael. He was going all out for that. But what's he got now? Yeah, he's got a super thin cut on the three in the side, and if he feels like he can get something on the cue ball, I think he should, he should shoot it. Yeah, the problem is he can't go natural. The scratch in the upper right is a big issue. So he's got to get the cue ball to the side rail, to the top rail, and then enough power to get it to open up and come back down. He could easily just roll up on the four. That's, that's the prudent safety play right here. And I know he doesn't want to surrender to the table just because what happened to Alex could easily happen to him. The problem here is you have to give it enough time to draw the ball to the side rail or else you could scratch in the upper corner, but then you also need enough power to produce shape on the four. So big dilemma. And he's doing everything he can to not have to play safe. Really wanting to keep uh, his turn at the table. say it all the time if they had to lay him out there or they lay tough rack after rack I still think he's the best in the world in my opinion in several racks already in this match even though we're only at five all that have felt like they're at a sort of seven all or eight all situation this is another one and he wants to get close to this combo even if he has to cut it a little bit accuracy is at a premium just as he sizes this up, Jeremy, we're sitting here next to some of these youngsters playing in the SVB Junior Open. They've got their practice area here. Don't know if you can see him. There's a kid over there who only looks about eight, and he's wearing these specially adjusted shoes that enable him to reach the table. I actually saw him hitting a break-off shot on the practice tables yesterday, and he absolutely rifled through the balls. He can only be about eight or nine. Yeah, I met that kid in Vegas, and he's certainly going to be a champion. Really nice. Basically got a little 
kind of stilts attached to his shoes. But the good thing about that is it gets him to where not only he can reach, but he gets that back hand to where he's underneath and not out to the side like some of the youngsters when they start at such a young age. And would you ever believe it would be 6-5 SVB in this match some 45 minutes ago? All sorts of things have happened. He's had a couple of break and runs. He had a golden break in the previous rack. That one there was such hard work. But Shane Van Boning now leads for the first time in the match at 6-5. And you know, JJ, we were talking about Kazakis winning nine racks in a row against SVB in the World Masters final. That obviously was from 0-0. Van Boning could do it here from 5-0 down. All the momentum with him now. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that Kazakis can rest easy on, and of course it... You could label it a mistake, but it wasn't an open shot. It wasn't a, a silly mental error. It was just a dry break, which both players have had. Shane has just kind of taken over since. Oscar Dominguez on the hill at 8-6 against Radislav Babika. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz on the hill at 8-4 against Ralph Suke. Okay, it looks like Alex wants to take a timeout. Gives us a chance to look at some of the other scores. John Morris, 7-6 in front over Victor Zielinski. Marcel Price, the Welshman, doing so well. 7 all now against Thomas Kaplan. Just ha uh, half a dozen places left to be decided in the last 32, including Chang Young Min against Skylar Woodward, but they're just getting started. Now, speaking of the last 32, Roland Garcia already making great progress towards getting through to the last 16 because he's 5-1 up on Wojciech Shevchik, the man who beat Alban Ocean earlier today. Yanni Uski now 3-2 over Abdullah Al Yusuf. And Mustafa Alnar has a 3-0 lead against Mario He. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Roland Garcia I talked about it with Carlo Beato. Of course, that name speaks for itself. You know, reigning champion, world champion, but how consistent Carlo is tournament you know after tournament it seems same thing with Roland if you watch him he's just you know he's not quite as flamboyant as some of the other Filipino players but goes about his business and gets a lot of that business done speaking of Carlo Beato he's going to be next up on this table against Noyuki Oi that of course is a repeat of the semi-final from last year and over on table two it's going to be Joshua Filler against Tyler Steyer Steyer, of course, having beaten Fedor Gorst earlier today. I know you've got some big calls to make over the next week, Jeremy, and Steyer obviously has been on your radar anyway, having <laughs> featured in the team three times in the past. But if he beats Gorst and Filler in the same day, then even if he doesn't get in automatically, he's really making a case for himself. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think it's easy to say he's definitely in the mix and he's... I think heading in a great direction. I was saying it earlier in this year. I think he's made a little bit more improvement, both physically and mentally. So here's what's happening on two at the moment. Chang Young Lin and Skylar Woodward. Of course, it was Chang Young Lin who played. Shane Van Bonin in the final of this championship back in 2016 in Virginia. When SVB got his fifth title. Yeah, I remember that one, Michael. I actually made a little run myself at that event. Chang beat me in the final four of the winner's side, believe it or not. And then SVB knocked me out. Don't have a very good record against SVB. Not many people do. Well, I got a few wins, but I mean, it's not like, you know, we haven't played a ton. I beat him in Reno a few you know years back when he first hit the kind of professional scene and Couple wins here and there, but probably about three and three or four and about nine, I think, something like that. Well, that's pretty good. Well, not out of nine, three and four and nine. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's let's still get not that bad clear. anyway. Let's be fair about it. Yeah, a couple of them I didn't should have not even left the room. He just kind of <laughs> beat me like I wasn't there. But yeah. Here's Chang with the opening rack there. Huge match. I think it was Sean Oki, wasn't it, who beat Van Boning three times in 2021 yeah. in various events. So 
So we're still waiting for uh, play to resume on table one. Shane Van Boning from 5 mil down now leads Alexander Kazakis 6 5. I'm guessing this is why Kazakis has gone out, just to recompose himself. And yeah, you know, it used to be the rule you had to wait till it was your turn, right? That's changed a little bit. It's just between racks, and which is fine. Between racks, I mean, you know, your timeout's there for different reasons, and one of them is definitely to try and maybe settle yourself, plus kind of slow down a little bit of momentum, a little gamesmanship. Nothing wrong with that. The news of a couple more winners, one of which is really going to please you, Jeremy. Oscar Dominguez, as we've said, is leading the race at the moment for those two automatic spots on the Moscone team, which will be filled this week to join Shane Van Boning. He's beaten Radislav Babika 9-6. Now, that's a good result any day of the week, and it takes him through to play Si Cha Chen for a place in the last 16. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has also won. He's ended the hopes of Ralph Suke, the champion of 20 years ago. FSR wins 9-4 and will play Wu Kun Lin in the next round. So only four places left up for grabs in the last 32. One of them at the moment looks to be heading Shane Van Boning's way. What can Kazakis do about it? Yeah, I'm very happy with Oscar's win, especially because the start of the match wasn't ideal. He hung tough against a very, very strong and experienced player. And Babika, and hats off to him as well. Kind of said that, I believe it was at the European Open. I think all the young Polish players that are coming up has kind of, you know, kind of sparked him into a lot of professional pool again. Yeah, three poles in the quarterfinals there, more than any other country. Six in the last 32, and in fact there have been nine in the last 64. Yeah, this lay's pretty perfect, you know, just to come behind the three, putting the one below the nine. It's not a devastating snooker unless the cue ball comes up on the back of the three and kind of welds to that that red three ball, but otherwise it lays really natural. And I'm wondering, is he considering a two-way shot here? Nah, you can't consider it the two-way. It's not really a position shot. So just the safety behind the three. Uh, I don't know. Oh, nice. Super nice. And he's cut off a little bit of the one ball with the two there. Should be a two rail escape, though, right before that left side pocket to the bottom rail and up underneath the one. Boning has really got that air about him at the moment of not on my watch. Are you going to get a chance to get back into this? Well, you know, that's a big piece of why he has five of these titles and so many more around the world is, you know, you wouldn't say other players would give up, but maybe say it wasn't my day without maybe, you know, a definition of a give up where he doesn't. You know, he pulls these matches out. We saw it earlier this year a couple times in the World Pool Championships and we're maybe seeing it again here at the U.S. Open. Yeah, and most notably, that incredible match against Mika Iman and 10-3 down, looked to be heading for an early exit from Milton Keynes, turned it around to win 11-10. If you can turn that match around against a competitor like Mika, who's been around so long and won so much, and you've still got to have belief in any situation. Yeah, and the ref needs to be on this one. I'm sure Marcel's close, or one of the head guys, because he could get close to the two and the one here. Well, it's not a hard call to make in the end, is it? Because he's absolutely smacked into the two. Yeah, the one never moved, so Shane should draw up this right side rail, playing for the two in the side. That's what he's looking at. You can follow into position. That's actually what I prefer a lot of times. He's going to come three rails. But don't be afraid to play the one in the upper right corner and be able to follow just because anytime you're going forward, your touch is usually at its best. Nothing wrong with this either. He's going to play a three rail position. Two natural rails just gaining the third rail. Kind of important he gets on the two somewhat properly, though, to get on the three.
You know, like I said, I think if Alvin Ocean has this ball in hand, he follows shooting this one up in the upper right, hits right before the side with the cue ball and then up into position. This got to bounce just a little bit. Doesn't want to be too thin. Yeah, could have used a little more out of that. He's a little thin, a little bit closer to the rail than he wanted. The good thing is the three goes in both corners. So if he just wants to level out and roll this in and come across at the five, nothing wrong with that. Shane has had two dry breaks in this match, and Kazakis is going to really be pulling for a third here soon. It's going to be seven to five before you know it. And, you know, before I bet on a dry break, I'd almost wager that Kazakis doesn't come back to the table. It's just my feeling, anyways. Well, that's the key thing, isn't it? Dry break, no control over what happens. At least if you get something off the break, but don't have anything to go at. You can play the next shot. Keep the heat on, Kazakis. And, of course, that dry break from Kazakis really got Shane going. But a couple of times Shane has kind of battled and kind of won the tactical side of this, uh, some situations with Alex. Well, that's the thing with this run, which now looks set to extend to seven racks. There have been all sorts of different ways of winning them. Now he's just going to size up. Should come off the eight to the right side rail. You know, the top rail, right side rail for the nine in the lower left. He could draw back, I guess. I don't really see much reason to do that. He may draw back a couple inches, but yeah, not, not a whole lot. So the winning line is starting to appear on the horizon. We saw Lee Van Corteza win seven racks in a row on this table earlier today. To see off Jason Shaw, Shane Van Boning has done the same here and he now leads 7-5. Over on table two, it's still 1-0 to Chang Young Lin against Skylar Woodward. And Thomas Kaplan has become the third Polish player through to the last 32. He's finally shaken off the dogged Welshman Marcel Price by nine racks to seven. Viktor Zielinski may yet be the fourth, but he's going to have to win the last two racks against John Mora to do it. He's trailing at the moment 8-7. Of those three Poles, who are already through to the last 32, one of them is really going to have to turn it round to make any further progress. Wojciech Shevchik is 6-2 down against Roland Garcia. Janioski leads Abdullah Al Yusuf 3-2, and it's also 3-2 now in favour of Mustafa Alnar against Mario He. All the other matches in the last 32 are either yet to start or are still in the first rack. 7-5 to the world champ. OK, so we've said Kazakis needs a favour to get him back into this. This is the moment. Yeah, he made two on the break. Three on the break, including the the white ball, and now Kazakis with a pretty routine out. I mean, he's got to work the cue ball from the five to the six, but ball in hand should get prime position on that five and make things pretty easy. Of course, probably the ultimate sin in nine ball pull, a scratch on the break the worst feeling that's the thing isn't it something like that can always happen even if it feels the other guy has got all the momentum and you're just going to be sitting down till it's time to shake hands something like that can always happen and as much as anything jeremy you've got to be sitting in your chair preparing yourself mentally to deliver if the chance does come your way 
Yeah, absolutely. It's been a while since he got to shoot offensively, that being Alex. He did have a kick shot that he gave up ball in hand on just a couple games ago, but at least he can, again, know that it wasn't a big miss that really allowed Shane back in this match. So Alex has played super solid. Just got to keep that confidence a brewing. And uh, did he get an angle here? Okay, he got enough. Not a whole lot of an angle. Still think he's okay to draw up the right side of the table. And may not have gotten near as much angle as he wants, but still should be okay. Good shape here. He's a little thinner than maybe the television will tell us, but maybe he has to add a hair left English going forward with the cue ball. Not a lot, just to make sure he doesn't end up on top of the seven. And kind of spread the cue ball open a bit with that side spin. there than he really wanted. Shouldn't be an issue. Just got to really put a little more into the cue ball plan from the eight to the nine. I haven't seen Sky Woodward at the table on table two yet. I know it's early, but been a lot of Chang over there shooting so far. Yeah, he's two nil now in favor of Chang. So, Kazakis has thrown a bone with the scratch on the break. We're heading for one heck of a finish here. Kazakis back to just one behind now. It's 7-6. Let's have a look at table two, the match you were talking about. Skylar Woodward's two-time Moscone Cup MVP still battling to confirm his place on this year's team. A win here would be a massive help, but he's 2-0 down against Chang Yun Lin. John Mora on the hill at 8-7, as we've said, against Victor Zielinski. They're still playing the next rack there. And then in the next round, Lee Van Corteza, after his win over Jason Shaw, has won the first rack against Coping Yi. Roland Garcia now 6-3 ahead of Wojciech Shevchik. Coping Chung. Has won the first against Niels Fion. Abdullah Al Yusuf has turned it round to make it 3 all now against Yanni Uski. And Mustafa Alnar leads Mario He by four racks to two. The big drama's here though. Kazakis just one behind now. Yeah, and he's going to really shake his head here with another dry break. Oh, the eight ball, eight ball. Oh. You could see he looked reluctant to leave the table. It was almost like he couldn't quite believe it come up dry there. Yeah, Shane can't pocket the one cleanly. Does have a long rail bank. It's a little funny. Just uh, has to kind of hold it, kind of twist the ball a little bit. Uh, it'd be hard for him not to shoot at that. Now he's climbed his way back into this match with some fine runouts, but it's been a lot of tactical battles as well. So 
thing is, there's not a great, I mean, like really like secure safety that you're in love with that you're going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm burying him every time here. Now, if he's trying to float behind the seven, could easily sell out. That's what he's going to look at. He's got to cut the one just a hair to move the cue ball over behind, by the seven or behind the seven. Doesn't really put the one in the best places going down table. Could end up between the three nine and give up a shot. Uh, he played the bank, which I thought he would anyways. Try and, you know, make Kazakas come with it if he does miss. And I think Shane got fortunate here. for Kazakis is he I think all he can do is cross this ball over kind of bank the one between the three nine and just kill the cue ball one rail on the bottom rail he may leave a little bit of a look but if he tries to do more than that I think he could get away from him and it doesn't lay bad at all to bank the one between the three nine and let the cue ball go to the side rail with a little left English. Let it just kind of die down here to the middle of the end rail. I think if you get involved trying to get tricky with this safety, and I don't think offense is really available, I think you could really surrender an easy shot to Shane, and now's not the time to give up an easy one. He's queuing up like he's attacking. What a shot. Great oh, shot. What guts. What courage. What composure. Yeah. Not only to pull the trigger there, but how clean did he hit it? Center cut. Said he loves defying people's expectations in his career. I don't think many were expecting him to do that. What a chance now to level it up. Yeah, really no worries, hardly at all. Open 3-4, maybe a 5-8 combo here in a minute. Probably would like to stay away from the combination as long as, you know, he's okay on the 5. That 8 leads easily towards the 9 later in the rack. didn't know whether Kazakis would be given a route back into this match. We did know that if he was, he would give absolutely everything to make it count. And that's exactly what he's been doing since that scratch on the break Van Bonin had at the beginning of the previous rack. He's the one in control at the moment. Yeah, and I think I stay away from the combination. Not saying it's not super easy, obviously, but like I said, it leads the eight leads towards the nine a little easier later in the rack. You know, say you fall a little funny getting from the six to the seven, you get kind of straight, right? Well, that doesn't really matter as long as the eight's hanging in the side. So 
You never know on a combo. It's not supposed to get away from you in this spot, but you just never know. Yeah, I think the way he played that, he's thinking the same way as you. Yep. I think just a little more foolproof. Even though foolproof is, is far a, lot, a thing that's far away from these two or any of these top pros. Just can't expect some kind of silly miss. Seems a long time since he raced into that 5-0 lead. It's become a very different contest now, but it's one in which he is hanging on so bravely. And he's level again. Start from here with a race to two, because it's 7-all. One by one for both USA and Europe. Players have been eliminated today from contention to claim an automatic place on the Moscone Cup teams. And Viktor Zelensky is the latest to go because he's been beaten 9-7 by John Mora of Canada, who will now play either Chang Yong Lin or Skylar Woodward. Chang leading 2-1 there at the moment. That's the only match still going in the last 64 now, apart obviously from the one we're watching on table one. Zelensky came here this week at number seven in the European standings. Needed to get into the top three. It isn't going to happen for him now. In the next round, Chris Mellin and Badr Alawadi level at one all. Lee Van Cortez are now 2-0 ahead of Copenhagen. Yi. Oshek Shevchik has closed to 6-4 down against Roland Garcia. Dolal Yusuf has really turned it round against Yanni Oski. He's now leading 4-3. And Mustafa Alnar is ahead by the same score against Mario He. 7 all on table one at the US Open. Watch out, cue ball, it needs a friendly kiss. And watch the one as well. Well, neither of them has dropped. Yeah, he's made a ball on the break, though, so, and I think the one is okay. He made the seven. I think the one is definitely playable. The reason I was saying watch the one would have been if it had dropped, well, what would he have had on the two? Not sure that passes. Yeah. The eight and the, sorry, the nine and the five. Yeah, good call there, Michael, but now he's really perfect, naturally off the right side of the one, two rails right at the two. Yeah, Kazaka should get to the hill first here. Of course, we take for granted that these guys just always get out, but still, you know, it's not easy. He's got to do the, do the work. Now he'll just draw this back about two or three inches to be able to come one rail across for the, from the three to the four. Definitely wants to draw it back some though. Wants to carry a little natural angle on the three. And I tell you, we've seen some really highly, you know, quality matches played that were one-sided, right? We've seen a few of those this week, but maybe this is the best quality match on a close one coming down to the end where that's what I was about to say. Oh, my goodness. It's one big miss that seems to get at Kazakis. Well, Jason Shaw came away from his match earlier today. Furious over a kick he had had at a big moment. Alex Kazakis will be kicking himself. He now goes on to lose this match. And can you believe it? It's come from him. The man who just pour, pours so much focus into every single ball, makes the most of every opportunity that's given to him. And then he goes and misses one like that. Yeah, I was getting at how high quality from both players. 
I was just going to follow it up with as long as Kazakas can maintain. Because it's not like once he gets in that mode that it's a tough shot that gets him. It's usually, you know, and that's actually a lot of players, but it's usually somewhat of an easy shot that gets the best of Kazakas at times. Joe Davis, the 15 times world snooker champion, who basically invented that game as we know it today, used to say it's the easy ones that are difficult. We saw it prove there again. Yeah, they're difficult, but also they have a ton of value, meaning, you know, those are the ones. Three or four shots a game for these guys are pretty easy, but you can see how disciplined they stay with them. They treat them just like the tough shots. So much on the line for Kazakis. Chance to get through to the last 32 of the US Open, which hasn't been his greatest event over the years. And if he got there by knocking out the world champion, five-time US Open winner, it's just the sort of springboard from which you can go on to win an event like this. Turn that could have gotten back into the Moscone Cup team. Well, it's definitely not over. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we had more drama in this match, but you know, if Shane was to go on and make the nine on the break or get a very routine kind of out in the last game, you kind of it just wouldn't surprise you, right? After that big miss on the two ball from Kazakis. Not hard to identify the big turning points in this match. Kazakis' dry break in the sixth rack when he was 5 0 up. That was what started the turnaround to 7 5. Then the scratch on the break from Van Boning. Start of rack 13. That was what started Kazakis revival, which looked as though it might take him all the way to the hill until the next massive turning point. That incredible miss on the two. Yeah, and it's been pure class from Kazakis. You know, the one ball he buried at seven to six. You know, that's a shot would be looked back on if he went on to win this match, but quickly forgotten if if SVB pulls this off, this comeback. So sports is an amazing thing and pool is no different. And there have been so many big moments in this match. There may yet be another one. Kazakis needs it to swing it back in his favor because somehow Van Bonin is first to the hill at 8-7. We thought the last match on this table between Gorst and Steyer might be the most enthralling contest we'd see today. Seems a long time ago now because this has turned into a real epic. The one other match still going in this round, Chang Younglin, 3-1 up on Skylar Woodward. In the next round, Chris Melling leads Badr Alawadi 2-1. It's one all between Max Lechner and Jonas Suto Camino. Also one all between Ko Ping Chung and Niels Fayan. Si Cha Chen and Oscar Dominguez level up one all, and Sanyan Pelovanovic has won the first two racks against Konrad Yasushin. All the other matches as you were when we last updated. So here we are, Van Boning breaking on the hill. down the two's going to spin to the end rail I'm not sure how offensive this he can go out but a lot of some options and you said a name there right before that break that I would watch out for is Pelovanovic he lost a brutal match on the winner side Hill Hill I believe it was and then he went on to really get in stroke he started off the next match I feared a, a little drowned from that that loss at Hill Hill but picked it up midway Played really nicely to qualify. Had a big, convincing win over Aloysius Yap not long ago. And he's a big talent, Michael. And, you know, that silver medal at the World Games is kind of like one of those stepping stones for a kid like that that can do wonders. If he wins that match, he may play the defending champion, Carlo Beato, next. Ooh, now where's this going? Well, it's going to leave a jump shot. Maybe a swerve shot at the two. We'll see. He kind of wanted the two to hit the eight, maybe. I don't know. Probably not, you know. He didn't want to threaten scratching, right? So he's going in into the four at all times. The problem for 
Alex is if he has to jump this ball. Well, he's going to have a little heat on it, and I don't know if he can hold the cue ball for a shot on the three. He may have to kind of swerve this ball to really have a chance. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think he's just sizing up that swerve shot at the moment. But the way the balls lay, whoever gets that first real shot at the two should either end this match for Shane or take us to Hill Hill if it's Alex. Yeah, I like the swerve shot. Hard to, hard to hang it. That's the good thing about the swerve. It's hard for it to hang at that speed. It'd probably get away from the pocket or go in. Uh, if it lays over the side, that'd be a little unlucky. Oh, he's okay. So a treacherous little situation here, Michael. The margins on which these players' careers, their aspirations, their livelihoods hang are just so minute. You look at that two ball there. That rolls one more rotation. And it could be match over. And I'm wondering what he's going to do with it here. This is super touchy. You know, you don't want to just push it past the seven, leave some type of jump or a real first shot. You know, you could get a little froggy here, going real first off the two, chipping what is his left side of the two and roaming the cue ball across the table for a snooker behind maybe the five and nine. You may leave a jump there as well. So like I said, nothing easy at all. Now what he's going to look at is cutting the two past the seven and just trying to let the cue ball just come off the rail and then stay on top of the five nine. I'm not in love with that at all. That type of shot is just not one you ever practice. It's a very hard shot when the nerves are high. Easy to let up on it. He's not pulling the trigger, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, two things could happen here. Of course, it could be successful, but the two could not go near and far enough, or the cue ball could overrun coming across the table. We'll see. Yeah, that's the one I would have feared is the cue ball. And you got to say, that's a pretty darn good shot under the circumstances. Chang Yong Lin is now 4-1 up against Skylar Woodward over on table two. And I think Shane has left a little piece of the two. I'm not so sure it's makeable, but he can certainly just edge it and run the cue ball back up. Skyler's gotten back on the board, and you know, that's the type of match Skyler needs. He knows he's got to play really pure against Chang to have any chance. Yeah, that ripple of applause may well have been to mark the end of that sixth rack there. Woodward back to 4 2 behind. Mario He, incidentally, in the last 32, has just gone 5 4 up on Mustafa Alnar. Uh, he's playing the kick here. This could get away from him. This isn't the easiest kick because he has to avoid the six with the two ball. So I was going to say, he may not get a rail either with the seven there, but nice effort. Precision of so much of the tactical play in this match has been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, from both guys really playing a lot of different types of shots. Now, the problem with kicking this direction is he knows he's kicking to a very open table. He'd much rather be able to kick where the two's going towards the pink or the green, but now it's going to come up towards the eight, most likely anyways, and hard to get much cover when there isn't much cover there. Could fluke it, though. Could fluke something. Nope. 
We're staring Hill Hill right in the face. I don't know if it's possible for Alex Kazakis to find another level of focus. He has every reason to. No, he passed up. Glorious chance in the previous rack with that miss on the two. Really be aware of how important it is to avoid anything similar here. Well, with that kick shot, Shane did him a, a little favor, moving the three a little closer to the pocket. Nerves are high. That definitely makes the out a little easier. Really very minimal cue ball movement really needed here. This is the shot. Now, this isn't the type of shot you want to draw out of there. But with top inside, the only thing you really have to worry about is a little hook on the ball. And maybe that six, the green six, that would be the worry. If he catches the six, maybe he kisses up, gets behind the five nine. I don't know if he has enough angle to get easily underneath the six two rails. It's close. Well, he's hitting downward on this. So he's trying to stun out above, I think, maybe. I don't know. This could go wrong. Oh, good, good effort there. And what he was saying to himself there is, if I do catch a little ball here and there, I'm going to have enough steam on the cue ball to get clear. Every shot at the moment feels like the winning nine ball. It would be such a huge moment for him to win this match, to beat Shane Van Boning. It's such an early stage of the US Open. And as I said, potentially give himself the springboard to finally become the winner. One of these absolute top level big field events. Going all the way. Jeremy, I've got to ask you this. 32 matches in this round. 30 have so far been completed. Do you know how many of them have been Hill Hill? Uh, zero, I'm guessing. Zero. This is our first. Kazakis with a satisfied smile on his face there. And he knows this match. He's been looking to slip away from him a couple of times. And he would love to be able to forget about that missed two ball in the previous rack forever, which he will be able to do if he can take this deciding rack. And, of course, he'll have the break. Quickly, let's look at the other matches. Chang Young Min, as we said, 4-2 up on Skylar Woodward. And in the last 32, it's Chris Melling leading Badr Alawadi 4-1. Lee Van Cortez, what a day he's having. Thrashed Jason Shaw earlier. He's 4-0 up against Copen Yee. Voshek Shevchik and Roland Garcia, that's six all now. Yanni Uski 5-4 ahead of Abdul Al Yusuf. 
and Si Cha Chen as a 3-1 lead over Oscar Dominguez. They are some of the big stories elsewhere. The biggest story of all is happening right here. Now look at there. Oh my. Now he's going to have a go at this one way or another considering this isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, you can't be too upset about this right here. He could be dead snookered with no shot at all. He's got a very doable kick shot with the two hanging. The three's very near over the opposite pocket. This could be a lot worse for Alex. He needs to keep that focus because he's still a huge favorite in my opinion. The long rail kick is not hard at all. I mean, I think if if Shane had the opportunity, he would he would love to shoot this long rail kick right here. Now it's one thing if the three's away somewhere, you know, pinned away and you can't get position, but I don't even know if I would jump this. I think the jump has more of an issue of a problem than the kick shot. I really do. The kick shot, if you make it, the cue ball's not going to get away from you. Jump shot, you're going over a ball that's very close. So when that happens, any miss hit on the cue ball, you curve the cue ball and you could have serious problems. I would just go to the top rail myself. Now he won't do it with the short cue, obviously. He's just kind of measuring things up. And Sky Woodward has put another beat on his side, 4-3 and at the table. I can't believe he's not going for the kick. Don't get me wrong, I'm not so good with the jump cue, so there is a little difference there, but this is a kick shot you learn as a professional early in your years, right? So what a big decision to make. Whatever way he goes with it, could prove to be the final determining factor. Yeah, the only way to not come away with the shot this way is if he happened to catch the two off the second rail very thin and the cue ball kind of ran. But I think he's going to hit it at a speed to where it'll still be fine. Be very surprised if this ball isn't made and he doesn't get all the way out. Always a little drama, Hill Hill, though, Michael. Oh, we love it. You don't want to see a break and run, a golden break in this sort of scenario. This is how you want it to be, especially in a match with so much on the line, so much history between the players involved. Now, the point he was aiming at, I still think is okay. But he was aiming a little more to play for that natural bend of the ball that we talk about a lot. Now, the only thing is if you play for that a little more, you don't use that second rail. There is one other misfortunate or unfortunate, excuse me, thing that could happen. And that's following the two in after pocketing the ball. Very hard to do from that angle, but it is a possibility. This is one of the great things about not having a shot clock. The tension just gets ratcheted up with every passing second. Yeah. Again, just a top English roll. Should be arc a little bit to the long rail. Oh, wow. Well, and a little unfortunate not to get an angle and the cue ball end up on the rail here. He'll take it though, won't he? Just Absolutely. to have the chance to play the next shot here. Absolutely, a little unlucky the four doesn't pass the eight. There wasn't much contact there. I think it went rail first and then caught it on the way back. Yeah, that's how he ended up on the rail, or else he would have had the cue ball a little cleaner where he could hit a little draw stroke. Now what? Does he jack up and try and stun this ball? Well, if he doesn't get that little flick on the two, that's probably the end of that, isn't it? But he battles on. I don't think he can get the position he's trying to get with top English. Watch out for that left side. He's not shooting yet, is he? Yeah. It's going to be a bank shot. He was trying to make the ball actually arc into position. He's 
got to go for the bank, though. I mean, it's set, sitting perfect. He's already buried one to open this match. Is he going to bury one to close it? This is what they came to Atlantic City to watch. Great players producing top-level drama. Coming easy, but he's still at the table. Yeah, and here's where Alex needs to not take too, too much time. I mean, this is right in front of him. I mean, this is your first round match against, uh, you know, uh, where you're a big favorite. You just get down and pocket the ball, and that's all it is here, the five and the six. Seven, eight, and nine, pretty easy. So just one rail down past the eight a little bit. That way he can go naturally off the eight to the top rail and then swing into position somewhat straight in on the nine. I wouldn't get involved with anything but one rail here with the cue ball. Kazakis pots these next two balls. Shane Van Boning will go into his 40s, still looking for that record-breaking sixth U.S. Open. And for a long time, it looked as though to Gibraltar 2019, we might be adding Atlantic City 2022. As it seemed Alex Kazakis might lose a big, high-profile race to nine from 5-0 up for a second time. Well, something he didn't feel too great about. Better to start over, especially you have that opportunity, no shot clock yet, right? So. You see the guys so often on the nine ball take their extension, you know, when there is a shot clock involved. So nothing wrong with that. He's earned that right. Alex Kazakis lost seven racks in a row to trail 7-5, he leveled at 7-all. He missed a simple two ball to let Van Boning get to the hill. But Kazakis, as ever, has poured every last drop into it and has prevailed 9-8. He will play Thomas Kaplan in the last 32. The world champion is out. Yeah, you gotta give it to Alex there though. He started off very well he ended very well and a real high quality match from both players really very similar the break and runs a little different with Shane making that comeback right but very good stats from both players and uh, I wouldn't be surprised now because Akis kind of gets the 